So we should start. It is already a time. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Leila Yael Garcia Castro, and I'm going to chair uh, the um, session for today for the guidelines for publishing structured data on the web. This uh, session has been prepared by the Research Metadata Schemas Working Group, and we will have uh, two invited speakers today. So let's going to start, oops, sorry, yeah, with the tiny URL. Um, in here, you will go to the session notes and you will find all the relevant links in those notes as well. The slides, the outcomes of the group, the group itself, you will find everything in there. And just to make it easier for everybody, I put this tiny URL in all the, the slides. So let's hope that it will make things easier. So, sorry, for the session, please uh, mute during the presentations. If you want to ask any question or you ask, uh, you want to make any comment, we have the chat and we also have the questions and answers uh, tab. If you want to turn your video, please uh, feel free to do so. If you don't want to do it, it's perfectly okay. Uh, remember the Twitter, um, not the handler, but uh, the hashtag, the Twitter hashtag for the plenary. And uh, yeah, please uh, get ready for the session and uh, to participate and contribute to our working group. So let's go into move uh, to the contributors of this session. Some of them will present today. Some of them will support at the different breakouts. So many thanks to all of them. And let's go to the agenda. We will start with the introduction to the group, then we will move uh, to the main output that we want to discuss today. But you can find the other two outputs of the group as well in the session notes. And we will have two presentations to invite speakers, uh, Julia Collins, that uh, will talk about the National Snow and Ice Data, Data Center, and Baptiste Shekoni, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Perfect. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, and he will present a case study with low frequency radio astronomy data. Then we will have the breakout rooms, and then we will have some sort of reports from breakout rooms and the wrap up. So now, Ming, please uh, go ahead. The floor is yours. Uh, do you want me to move the, the slides or do you want to share your screen? Uh, I, I think it's probably better for you to move slides, and um, I have just uh, uh, only a couple. Uh, okay, next one, please. So, um, I, uh, my name is Ming Fang Wu. I'm working for Australia Research Data Commons. I will uh, give a brief introduction of uh, what the issues this working group is going to uh, was have been addressing, um, what is the objective of this group and uh, where we are at now. Okay, so um, the issue um, this group went to addressing is that data discoverability. Um, so in last uh, 10 years or so, we have seen thousands of data repositories um, appear. So probably under the push of open and reproducible research and fair data and open data. And it's good to have those data managed and registered in a, a repository, but this um, from a data discovery point of view, we create also almost an island of each resource. Uh, think about where you where right. researchers would find the data and uh, where they would find the data repository. Uh, it's not easy to create a federated search on top of those repositories. The main issue is the interoperability between the repositories. Each repository has their own schemas um so that's the issue we want to address in next slide please um so uh 
So our goal is one to improve data discoverability through this um, particular approach. That is to um, consistent implementation and publish structured metadata of the web. So at the moment, uh, each of those bottom repositories, they publish metadata for discovery um, uh, for human consumption. Uh, what we, the approach we look at is could uh, when a repository publishes the um, landing page, they could go a little bit further to embed um, structured metadata into the landing page for machine to process. So we need a common vocabularies for these structured metadata and the implement that uh, syntactically constant for machine to process. Uh, while we are doing that, then we could have all um, uh, metadata uh, can be linked of the web and a knowledge graph can be built up, then we can create smart data discovery applications on top of that. Um, okay, next slide, please. So the objective of this um, uh, of this working group, straightforward. There are already community they um, have departed on this path. So we would like to bring together these communities um, to exchange experience, experience and how they describe research data and a related resource. And through these ex exercises, then we uh, identify and a bridge is a gap in existing schemas that come in use for research data. And certainly we would like to provide guidelines for those communities whose needs are not addressed by existing metadata schemas, such as a schema.org, and provide guidelines for um, uh, proposing extensions. Uh, next slide, please. So that's uh, how we structured this working group. We have four, four co-chairs uh, from different regions of the um, world and also represent different communities. Um, we also have a... Do you hear me? Okay, I saw a mute button on my screen. <laughs> um, um, and also we have a group of people um, sitting on an advisory group provide um, advice to the work. And we also hold a monthly course um, that's on second Thursday at PM. We usually send a reminder to the group mailing list. Uh, if you are interested, you can join us. Next, please. So um, that's how we um, we travel so far. So this group was started as a task force from data discovery paradigms interest group. Then we uh, organized a two of sessions. Then wrote and uh, the group charter get endorsed at the P14. That's our first plenary. Uh, so. This plenary is our fourth plenary. That means we also reached the span of a working group. Uh, so that's why uh, this session, we are focused on the uh, output that we are talking about later. So uh, from now to uh, next plenary, we aim to um, submit um, our uh, output get endorsed and also also um, would like to get uh, more adoption stories. Uh, we will discuss uh, where we go uh, from here in plenary 18. So after we finish working group, should we in maintenance mode, should we start an uh, interest group or uh, or stop there? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> okay. Uh, next slide, Lena. 
So uh, according to the plan, we have uh, three outputs. One uh, first output is data models. So that's a general conceptual data model with essential types and a property for research data discovery of the way. So what we did is we collected uh, about uh, I uh, can't remember, 10-ish um, crosswalk, 10 or 15 uh, crosswalk from a number of schemas, for example, ISO 19115, um, from data side schema, from DCAT, um, there are 15 of them, we map to the schema.org and trying to find the common patterns and the missing properties that's required for um, describing research data. For those interested, you can follow that link to have a look of that crosswalk. And the second output is guideline how to publish structured data. So uh, Lela will talk more about that later. And the third output is the tooling that help us to um, uh, the each step of publishing the structured data. So all link there, you can follow that link to see what data, uh, what tools are available. But uh, um, this session, we will focus on the second output, that's the guideline document. Uh, okay, that's our current status of this working group. If you have any questions, please, um, Put, um, put, put your questions in QA. Uh, I think now we will move on to the next section. That's Lela we are talking about the 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 output. So hello everybody again and uh, let's going to move to the second output of the group. As Ming uh, mentioned already, what we want to do in this group is uh, working on a common way to describe data across many different data resources. For this, we have mainly focused on schema.org. However, this can be done with other vocabularies as well. The idea is to keep uh, the things simple. So don't over engineering the whole thing. And uh, also allow some complexity that will um, allow the different uh, resource providers to be more expressive in what they are sharing. And it should be understandable by both humans and machines. If we share a common standard, if we share a common way to describe the data, then we can contribute to each other and we can get benefits from each other and create these sort of um, rich summaries that you can get when web pages expose a structured data markup. So the whole idea is to improve the interoperability across data catalogs. And uh, by doing that and doing it in a common way, hopefully we will be enabling also federated search across all different um, repositories. And you can put all of that in a knowledge graph, for instance, and even allow uh, more expressivity and more, um, more activities in there that can come from uh, the knowledge graph. So now let's going to see the second output, which is a set of recommendations uh, to publish markup on the web. What we want to do is to provide recommendations on how to add a structured markup on websites. However, we don't want to go to the nitty gritty details of implementations. What does it mean? So we uh, want to make it easier for data repositories uh, to become more discoverable over the web. And so we are providing recommendations for this and uh, to be more effective when they are exposing these metadata so other can also benefit uh, from it. We can also make things easier for aggregators so they can consume the markup provider provided by others and we can contribute to fairness particularly for metadata that it is describing the data exposed by the providers. What we are not covering with our guidelines is exactly which schema to use. That is up to the data repository or how to create or extend schemas. We are not covering this part in our recommendation. 
genes. We don't provide information on how certain genes work or how certain genes are going to index or rank the website based on the sort of metadata that they can collect. And we don't say anything about particular implementations because those are very attached to your own production environment, to your own case. We cannot tell you whether data catalog or data set is better for your own purpose. That is a decision that you have to take based on your own data. So here we have a quick summary of our nine recommendations. We start by clarifying the purpose. Why do you want to expose these metadata on the web? And what is what you want to achieve with that? Depending on your purpose, you will select some data to expose while you keep some of the other data that you want to expose so hidden because it is not needed for your purpose. Then you need to be identifying the resource that you want to add. Do you want to add the data set, the data catalogs? Do you want to expose software workflows? What is what you want to share with the world? And ideally, for all of those resources that you want to uh, share, you should provide a persistent identifier. Now, once you know what you want to share, you should start working on a crosswalk. A crosswalk is a map between the data that you have, the properties that you have, the descriptions of your data, with other existing schemas in the world, with what other people have done before. So you know how to refer to them and what are the crossing points across the different um, possibilities that you can use to express your data. It is very important that you incorporate external vocabularies if you see that it fits to your purpose and if you see that it will allow you better expressivity and improve the discoverability and interoperability. Not always this is necessary. Now, if you are going to implement the markup, uh, you should follow some community practices. So it is important that you know what communities are there and the community that you belong to, what they are expecting from the sort of markup that you provide. Be friendly to web crawlers. It's very important and it's our sixth recommendation. You want your markup to be crawled, to be um, scraped by web crawlers and by other aggregators, not only the web crawlers uh, provided by search engines, but other possible aggregators as well. Make sure that you are using available tools to make your life easier. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time that you face a problem. See what it is in there that will make your life easier and that will help you to get that, that markup faster, more efficient, uh, more coherent with others. Document very every step that you take because it will help you to understand later what you do, what you did, but also to share with others how your journey works. And it will make them easier to understand and even learn from your own experience. Find a community, and this is a kind of link to recommendation number five. So you can get support. Maybe they already offer some uh, crosswalks. Maybe they already offer some uh, recommendations, particularly, for instance, to external vocabularies that are useful in that community, and they can provide you uh, some uh, share experiences on how to create the markup for your web. On the breakouts, we will be working a little bit more on these recommendations. You will have the opportunity to see the long text around them and to provide comments and feedback or share whether you would be interested in adopting there and what challenges or opportunities you see in there. So we know that um, this is a lot to take, but you will keep working on these and you will have the opportunity to see more about the recommendations later today. So now I'm going to, uh, to stop sharing my screen and Julia, you can share yours. Thank you, everybody. Let's going to continue with Julia. Okay. Give me a second here. <clears throat> hopefully something is being shared. And hopefully that's actually the presentation. 
All right. Um, I am Julia Collins. I'm a software developer at the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado. And we had um, about a year and a half ago now done a, a first round of implementation on schema.org, adding it to our landing pages for our data sets. And so what I thought might be interesting to some people is to do a retrospective um, and see, did we manage to follow the recommendations and where might the recommendations helped us help us to do a little better job um, of how we implemented schema.org? So we currently use a Drupal as a content management system to manage the landing page content for our research data. So we, we generate those um, landing pages fairly automatically. They are based on a relational database and then we generate diff metadata records and those then get handed off to Drupal, which then parses them and creates landing page content. So as I mentioned, um, this presentation is looking at how many of the recommendations do we manage to follow in this process and how would we have improved our results if we had had the recommendations handy. Uh, number one, the first recommendation, clarify the purpose. So here we did pretty well because the project um, as we undertook it was specifically to increase the optimization, search engine optimization for our landing pages, um, data set related landing pages, and very specifically regarding Google data set search. I will back up a moment here and say that before we had transitioned to Drupal as our content management, we had some custom built scripts that generated our landing pages. And there had already been a round of um, exploratory schema.org implementation there. When we transitioned to Drupal, that custom script implementation went away, um, was no longer being used. So we're re-implementing in a sense schema.org for our pages. So anyway, we, we specifically had this project um, that was had as its goal to improve the optimization for our data set landing pages. So the idea was if you were to go to Google Data, data Set Search and you started typing in something, you would want to see our relevant data sets um, for that topic pop up in the options. And this is what it looks like today. I don't have a before picture, unfortunately. So recommendation two, identify the resources to be added. Again, we did a pretty good job here because we were very particular about, we want to add uh, our data set landing pages specifically um, to our to schema.org implementation. So again, these are landing pages that are generated uh, programmatically. They're not maintained in the content management system as a complete document. They are built from a diff metadata stream that is handed off to Drupal and then Drupal parses it and creates these documents. Number three, adopt or develop a crosswalk. Since we were already using diff uh, directory interchange format metadata as our mechanism of communicating between our backend database and Drupal, um, we, we were able to just take that. Diff is fairly high level. Um, diff gets parsed into the Drupal tokens that are in this center column. And then from that, we map them over to schema.org. And I did include in the slides, um, I think this is our entire mapping. In the case where there's nothing in the diff field, those records or those elements are being generated just secondarily from information that's already in place. Number four, incorporate an external vocabulary. Here we did nothing. Um, so we are just implementing, or we just implemented a very straightforward, basic, bare bones um, block of schema.org JSON content. Number five, implement markup sy syntax consistently. Uh, since we were already building our landing page content from uh, a relational database source, the landing pages are already quite consistent um, because they're all built in the same way, the same set of processes generating the content. And then we laid upon that Drupal, um, which apparently 
I'm not a Drupal developer, I should clarify that. So one of my colleagues or a couple of colleagues were responsible for then taking the Drupal component and adding processing within Drupal um, using specifically the schema.org meta, meta tag module, which then also allows us to generate the schema.org programmatically. So I think we did fairly well here because we did not have a lot of human um, interaction in terms of generating the schema.org content. We were able to set it up so that each landing page would be populated in the same way. Be friendly to web crawlers. Uh, it, Drupal out of the box did not have good support for a sitemap. So this is something that we still need to come up with. We are in the process of transitioning over to Drupal 8, um, which is a fairly major rewrite. And it does have different and hopefully better support for sitemaps as part of this schema.org or as part of the content management process. So number six, we were not very strong on. Number seven, make the best use of available tools. Uh, I think because we happen to be using Drupal CMS, we were using a content management system and we already had in place a database driven scheme for managing our metadata. We were able to leverage those tools and implement schema.org in a pretty straightforward way. Um, rather than writing a lot of custom uh, code to generate these records for us. H having said that, um, in italics here, I know what we didn't really do. I would like to explore additional tools to help us improve what's in there right now. So we have a very basic uh, clump of markup and we could generally, or we could definitely make it um, more complete and more useful beyond just very high level um, data discovery. So uh, here I jumped to the results because I think those, this, these first seven recommendations get you to a point where you have something to look at. Um, so again, you search for ice extent and now in Google data set search, you do see a result that has information broken out. Um, so the market, oh, excuse me, sorry about that. The markup does work. It does give us more details. Um, it does assist in the search engine optimization. So goals were met as far as Google dataset search goes. And this is a little excerpt of the programmatically generated schema.org content. So number eight, document and share every step. I think we only have partial success here. Um, here are the recommendations would have helped us position ourselves for the next step in our schema.org process, because we're going to have to go back and do some catching up and document what we did in the past, what the shortcomings were. Right now it's, um, it's more institutional knowledge or tribal knowledge in individual brains and, and not well documented for the teams to go back and look at it and build on it. Number nine, find and join a community. Uh, this is partial success too. We did this work to implement the schema.org markup before we did much interaction with uh, this working group. Um, I had been participating with some Arctic Data Committee activities on schema.org development for um, our polar data, which is a lot of what we manage. Um, ESIP obviously has a lot of activity in this area as well that's extremely relevant to the kinds of data that we hold. So these are two communities that I hope NSIDC can continue to interact with and in fact improve our interactions with along with the, these RDA efforts. So to summarize where I think we did a pretty good job um, just with our very basic project and trying to get something out there, um, we, we did a pretty good job clarifying the purpose, actually a good job on that one. Um, and I think this recommendation was very important in keeping us focused on the rest of the work too. Identifying resources, again, we had a very well-defined project and so that prevented us from wandering all over the map. There are other resources we could be identifying. I think some of our software, some of our um, tools that are developed for scientists, um, Python, IPython notebooks and that kind of thing, 
could also be distributed and with better markup so that they're easy, easier to find and reuse. Adopt and develop a crosswalk. We were doing a pretty high level implementation here. So this was not a complex crosswalk to develop on our own. Um, but I think going forward, we would want to do more investigation on existing crosswalks that might be out there to make our schema.org content richer. Number five, consistent markup. The fact that we were using programmatic means to generate our landing pages, to generate the resources that we're marking up means that uh, we reduce the human error that, that might happen. Um, and number seven, make, make the best use of avail available tools. That's closely related to number five. Uh, or number seven really enables number five, I think, for me. Where we didn't really connect, incorporating external vocabularies. So uh, this project was done, um, I don't want to say in a the quickest and dirtiest way we could do it, but but we there wasn't a lot of funding available or time available. So we had to stay focused on doing what we could do to get our basic goals met. So we didn't go and look for other vocabularies. Um, we didn't worry too much about making a very nice site map and didn't worry too much about documenting this information. And I think these recommendations are important in that they would would have helped create better results for us. Um, you know, we have good results, but these recommendations, I think, are important for us to go back and address and consider to improve what we're doing so far. So that is the summary. If there's any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. Um, I want to thank my NSIDC colleagues who managed the, the work. And on the Drupal side, Mary Ellen Byers did um, all that work. And my contact information is there if you'd like it. Thank you, Julia. Thank you very much. We have one question from CUE. I'm going to read the question aloud so you can answer for everybody. Thanks, Julia, for the update. Is the CMR also exposing a schema.org markup of NS NSIDC datasets? Does this cause issues with Google um, data set search? That is an excellent question, Siri Joda. I'm not sure, actually. Um, I don't think, well, I honestly don't know. So on the CMR side, that would come into play. The equivalent would be if you go to NASA's Earth Data Search and you do a search, that produces landing page type of information. And that's where I'd expect to see the schema.org if it exists. But I don't know if it does. And if it does cause issues with Google dataset search, I personally haven't seen them. But I think this would be a good one to follow up on. Um, maybe I'll take that back to Amanda as something we want to investigate. Thanks. Anybody else? If uh, anyone one, uh, has any other question, you can still add questions on the Q&A and we will take them uh, later. Now let's going to move to Baptiste uh, with a case study with low frequency radio astronomy data at uh, Observatoire de Paris. Okay. Thank you, Baptiste. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Ming Fang. Uh, can you see my, uh, my screen? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, I will uh, present you a work that we've been doing for a few months uh, uh, on trying to uh, enhance uh, the, the publication and data sharing of uh, low frequency radio astronomy. So uh, um, uh, this is concerning uh, uh, well, a large team, but uh, yeah, a small group of people worked on that. So I, I mentioned them here. Uh, about the context, uh, low frequency radio astronomy, uh, so it's really low frequencies uh, below the FM band, mostly concerns transient and bursty events in the solar system. So it's mostly the sun, Earth is also a natural uh, source, radio source, uh, uh, Jupiter and other planets. And so this is really at the interface of uh, several uh, astrophysics fields. Uh, with um, which all have already well-developed uh, standards for data. So there is the astronomy with the IVOA uh, that has that is uh, well 
often presented at RDA uh, meetings. Uh, but there's also space physics and heliophysics, uh, where I mentioned here uh, two uh, standards that are an, an, an alliance, a data alliance that are uh, uh, existing in this field, planetary sciences. Uh, developed in Europe or data center uh, in uh, in the US. And so we have to have interoperability. That's not an option. And all those uh, uh, vocabularies uh, uh, are applicable to, to our uh, metadata, uh, our data uh, from those various communities. And yeah, the mapping is not always straightforward. Doesn't work. Okay, sorry, let's do it again. Okay, <laughs> I have some troubles. Yes, uh, so I will focus on uh, on this project that we are uh, uh, doing, uh, working on now. It is called uh, Maser and is a, a toolbox for radio low frequency radio astronomy. The idea is to uh, publish at the, for, for this specific discussion is to publish data collections uh, from uh, teams working at Observatoire de Paris and collaborators. So it includes ground-based observation from uh, Nancy, the Nancy Radio Astronomy Station. So it's daily ongoing observation of Jupiter and the Sun since the 70s. Uh, Spaceborne observation with uh, many spacecraft in which teams from the Observatoire de Paris are uh, involved in for as PI or COI institutes. Uh, uh, we have also many uh, radio astronomy event catalogs, uh, so in the, in the low frequency range, historical radio astronomy, so history here started in the 70s, it's not so old, uh, and uh, supplementary material or uh, supplementary data from uh, papers that are published. So all these collections are published, uh, uh, must be published toward the relevant uh, science communities. So we need to have several interfaces as, as, I, as I showed. So we have set up, uh, here it's a, a schematic data management plan where uh, on the, from the left uh, most side, we have the raw data that we propose to have also uh, in a standard data format, community standards, uh, to have quick looks at, attached to those data. Uh, and then uh, uh, labels, uh, metadata labels in various uh, formats and, and depending on the communities that we are trying to reach. All these should be documented, should have software to play with. Uh, we, the idea is also to, to aim uh, delivery to uh, space, uh, space mission archives when it's a space mission and to have uh, persistent identifiers uh, with landing pages and also other interfaces uh, depending on the communities to, uh, to, to allow uh, um, various kinds of access, data discovery, streaming interface, uh, registry, uh, uh, um, uh, registration in, in registries. Uh, so all those science communities have already uh, uh, APIs. So here we are focusing on uh, data publications. So we use DOIs uh, through data site for our uh, persistent identifiers and we build landing pages. Uh, we are managing those uh, with uh, SPIP, uh, Content Manager System, uh, and uh, we include uh, schema.org metadata in the landing page. Uh, the ongoing work uh, at the moment is to try to have a unified uh, metadata management for which we can uh, in ingest uh, or extract from the data once for all the metadata and then we can dispatch in the right format after the right conversion to data site to build the doi uh, and then to schema.org uh, schema to uh, for the landing page and the other uh, metadata dictionaries for the other communities uh, so here uh, for uh, at, at the observatoire, the major project is a pilot project for that. Uh, so we need to do this cross matching, these cross works. And so the first one that we did is to do the, the, the cross work for uh, the space, the space physics uh, uh, metadata discovery for uh, between uh, schema.org and space. Okay, I have problems to go to the next slide. I'm sorry. So I will not, I will keep on. Probably better this way. Sorry if it's a bit small. Uh, so this is an example of the uh, the uh, one landing page. So we include citation, access to data, etc. Everything that should be on the on the landing page. At the moment, it's still a manual process, which is not so good. But we include uh, the goal is really to have uh, to build on the on the 
from a, a common input uh, all the metadata to, to, to build this. An example of the, the landing page metadata that we are uh, setting up. So this includes the classical uh, metadata, which are uh, the identifiers, the, 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 the authors, etc. And also we included for some cases uh, the, the measurement techniques or the, 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 variab the, the, the variables that, are, that have been measured, uh, trying to see what would be uh, the added value of, uh, of this kind of extra metadata. Uh, and the result is that, indeed, if you go to a data, data, data set search on Google, uh, you can find the, the data collections that are shared uh, through the Maser project at uh, Observatoire de Paris. And uh, so sometimes it's the first result, sometimes it's after the, the result at, uh, at NASA. So yeah, sometimes it's, uh, it's there. Uh, and, uh, and indeed, so here the, the screenshots are in French because my browser is in French, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how to, to change that. Uh, and uh, indeed it adds uh, the, 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 the type of um, uh, variables that are measured, the, the time span concerning by, uh, concerned by the, the collection, uh, the type of uh, the measurement technique. So this, this, this metadata is uh, rather interesting to, to get uh, in this context. Uh, I wanted to also show value the, the other uh, um, uh, interfaces that we are using, and in in this sense, we don't we not only aim for web data discovery, but also to data discovery uh, within the other uh, the, the community data discovery interfaces. So we want to we want that the, the crosswalks and the mappings are also uh, uh, going uh, to. Uh, other uh, dictionaries than uh, uh, schema.org. Here I show an example with uh, what we call the, the so the astronomy, the planetary science uh, um, astronomy uh, uh, interfaces uh, that has, that is done in the, the the Vespa project. And here it's also an example on uh, data display with metadata that are shared also. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, so this is just, I wanted to show the example of the, 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 the crosswalk that we did between schema.org and the space physics model. So this is uh, doable, not always uh, simple. And uh, the ongoing work to map from space physics to, so EPN core is the planetary science model, uh, and also solar uh, observations to this same uh, uh, EPN core model. So we are doing these crosswalks to be able to map data that are from a given community to a common uh, search interface, uh, and uh, to be able to, 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 to publish uh, and, and, and let the, the, the users discover the data. Uh, I wanted to also highlight a specific case a study that we did with uh, NASA PDS. PDS is the, the Planetary Data Center uh, data system archive. So it's an archive for a space mission in, uh, in, uh, at NASA, Planetary Expo Exploration Space Missions. And so this, uh, this information model is a, a very, very complete one that, uh, that really can uh, handle the whole, uh, the whole archive system of uh, the, the planetary data system. So we try to map with uh, other uh, planetary science uh, community interfaces that are not dedicated to uh, space exploration in, in, in this field. So it is possible. Uh, but it requires a, a, a lot of work, and so it's much more work than uh, what uh, what was expected. For instance, we have uh, something like 40 keywords for metadata in the EPN core standard, and it requires uh, more than 6,000 lines of XML just to define. And here there is no uh, validation, there is no mapping. So it's just definition of the term. So this is rather tedious, and so, yeah, uh, this is... Uh, Probably an example of uh, something that is very nice, but uh, may not be easy to implement. Uh, so some lessons learned and conclusion. So we are really at the beginning of, uh, of this process. Uh, as I say uh, we are manually editing the landing page at the moment to, to, to have the, the schema.org uh, uh, annotations. So we want to uh, update that and have it on a more, uh, on a more automated way, of course. Uh, it's easy to map between neighboring fields, clearly, 
uh, we can find because we are basically observing the same context and, uh, and, and, and providing, we need the same metadata to describe our observations. Uh, it's, uh, it's easy also uh, to, uh, to, to, to map uh, generic between generic with generic metadata systems like schema.org, but it might not be fully interoperable in the sense that we can map keys easily, but the values themselves uh, might not be uh, uh, the same uh, depending on the community. Uh, so the vocabularies behind the, behind the values. Uh, what I wanted to uh, to to say is this clearly. Uh, well, uh, uh, if if we had uh, um, if I have a chance next year to this, to to present that, I hope that I, I can show how the the guidelines that are proposed by the working group are helping us. We didn't do this work of assessing this uh, this here, but uh, yes. So my my plan in the future is to try to extend the crosswalks that I showed and publish them to try to help uh, the rest of the community. Uh, and clearly, uh, uh, the, the visibility of the data is enhanced uh, using, uh, using these uh, this crosswalks and, and, and annotations on the, on the landing pages. Thank you. Thank you, Baptiste. Do you have questions? Do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, this one will be a follow-up. Nick uh, would like to know more about the progress for next year. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, so far, what has been the most challenging activity when exposing these markup? Um, to, to expose the markup in schema.org, it's not difficult, I would say. Uh, if you if you stick to the generic metadata, uh, that is the the contributors, the authors, the the the, the reference. One thing uh, is that if you want to be friendly uh, with the, uh, the, for instance, with the Google Dataset Search, specifically, uh, you have to uh, to use their tool uh, to, for instance, for the the cross -ref referencing. Uh, between uh, between in the in the in the metadata, for instance, I can put some uh, some reference uh, to papers or other collections, uh, and uh, and the way, for instance, data site is producing the the the, the schema.org annotation uh, is not the one that Google wants. Mm -hmm. So so basically, it's yeah. Uh, I, I know that what I've done is makes uh, Google happy. I'm not sure it will make other uh, uh, web crawlers happy. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Baptiste. Uh, one one comment for all the audience um, that we have seen uh, in other people working with Markup is also that it is difficult to know how many details to include. For instance, if you want to include a reference to a paper, do you need to include the whole title? Um, all the authors or just with the DOI would be enough. So those are things that um, you will need to sort out whenever you decide to go um, and to add the markup to your web pages. And we really hope that re the recommendations and the presentation from Julia and Baptiste today will help you to get a better grasp on uh, what uh, you will be dealing with when you start adding your markup to your own websites for your own data sets. Okay, so thank you again, Baptiste and um, Julia. Um, yeah, I'm not going to share my screen because it just will say breakout session. We are ready for the breakout sessions right now. We will have three breakout sessions and we have proposed for the first one to work on the first uh, three recommendations for the second one from recommendations four, five, and six, and from the uh, breakout C room uh, to work on recommendations uh, seven, eight, nine. So on the notes, you have the link to go directly to the breakout rooms. So please uh, go there and start working. You can uh, select whether you want to go for um, 
discussion over the adoption of the recommendations or if you want to go for discussion on the recommendations. And if you decide for the last one or even for the first one, uh, you will have a link with the full text of recommendations. Feel free to add notes, additions, suggestions, whatever you think uh, will be useful for these recommendations in this document that has the full text. So see you in 25 minutes, 24 now, for the report from um, the breakout rooms. Thank you. If you are having troubles um, finding the link to the breakout rooms, you just have to scroll in the notes to page five, where you will find breakout room A, and then lower, lower, you would find the breakout room B. So you have the links in this. So you just can link in there directly and go to the breakout rooms. Please remember to add your notes to the uh, collaborative notes. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the main room. I'm going to give people one minute because I don't think everybody has withdrawn yet. I'm also seeing where the race feels some activity in our notes. Okay, it looks like more or less uh, the three groups have stopped working on the notes. So I'm going to ask um, the person reporting from breakout A to please come back to the stage and give us a summary of what you discussed in your breakout room. Um, is, I've got... Hi, Nick, we can see you. Please go ahead. Okay. Is the echo gone? Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, we ended up having a dis um, kind of uh, challenges for uh metadata and crosswalks and what tooling is going to be built to kind of leverage uh this information so we didn't really we didn't really have time to go through the recommendations themselves there's a i think there's only four of us there so we we, we sat and discussed our um kind of experiences i think ming fang made a couple of notes so i don't know if ming fang if you want to say anything about the notes i don't think there were uh, kind of specifically on the uh, crosswalk, uh, on the guidelines. Any of those experiences that you share in the group that you want to share with us? Alexander, do you want to talk about that? Because Alexander met would point that uh, by publishing the structured data also tick on the make data fair that uh, um, can help to um, probably is another purpose of um, what we already have identified. 
so we can add that up to recommendation one. So fairness of the data to be added to recommendation one. Okay, thank you very much. Anything else from breakout room A? If not, let's going to move to breakout room B. Uh, Adam, will it be you reporting back? Yeah, yep. So uh, we uh, we started out with a couple of questions in the chat, one on how to incorporate a vocabulary into a JSON document. So we discussed you know, how using JSON-LD, you can use a, the at context to specify those and um, and then just sort of pointed off to examples of where you can find more information on that. Another question came in about um, validating markup. And so we just pointed off to some shackle shapes and how that's done, and then talked a little bit about JSON-LD framing, and then jumped into recommendation four, which is about the external vocabularies. Um, and, and folks didn't have, well, actually, Graham chimed in to say that, uh, you know, it's a little hard to, to dis discern whether it's useful or not to put those in because it doesn't, it's not clear like what the use cases are on the harvesting side. Uh, and so, you know, we talked about the fact that that's sort of like the chicken and the egg uh, conundrum. Uh, so what we did in the document was just take notes on sort of like what domains we're all from and maybe any list any vocabularies that we use from those domains uh, so that we can at least capture that to sort of elevate um, that to potential harvesters. And then uh, we, we started on uh, recommendation five, which is about uh, clear and consistent syntax or, or markup syntax. And it was just a little unclear about whether our intent there was about consistency on syntax or using the, the vocabulary or markup structure consistently, um, which I thought was a, a really um, insightful um, thought or comment on those. And so we just made a note underneath that section that maybe there's some, some text for us to, to spell out a little bit clearly there. Um, cause we did have some good code examples in that section. Um, but maybe just need a little bit more clarity and we didn't get a chance to talk about recommendation six. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, whether we mean correctness or consistency, it's it's a good question. And yes, we will have to clarify those in the recommendations. Let's going to move to breakout room C. Who is going to Ruth? Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm getting a bad echo. Um, in any case. We had a very small group, um, but we had a good discussion. Actually, Chantel, can you do this? The echo is bad enough. I can't actually deal with it. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can do it. No worries. Um, so yeah, we had definitely had a small group um, with. Great input from Harrison, so thank you for that. Um, pointed out that uh, he's looking at, for more ways for like tools uh, for implementation and uh, more interested in modules or a package in Python or R to take input data and map to schema or maybe maybe several. Um, he noted several schema.org packages online for Python, uh, which was great. Uh, so I guess this is all sorry related to recommendation seven. Um, and then for recommendation eight, he made note that there's uh, for tools documentation, there's a, definitely a need for more um, more documentation on exactly kind of how to deal with commonly common problems and um, how to implement changes or kind of keep up to date. And there would be a need for a lot more documentation on that, which would be, I guess, a bigger heavy lift. Um, so we need both the domain expertise and developer expertise documentation. Um, and then we were just about to get to the last recommendation, but unfortunately weren't able to do that. Hill, uh, 
we we knew that the the time was short to go through the three recommendations. I'm actually surprised that uh, Breakout B and Breakout C managed to go through two of the recommendations because we know they are complex and the text associated to them is is long. So thank you very much uh, for this effort. And with this, I think uh, we can go to the wrap up of this session. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you to Ming Fan, Adam, uh, Julia, and um, Baptiste for the contribution to the notes and all the other people that uh, work in these uh, notes and the people that facilitated the breakout rooms, Ruth, Chantel, uh, Nick, thank you very much. And thank you all the attendees. Um, if you see on the chat, Ming just put the link um, to, to the group and the, the guidelines for publishing instructor metadata. This will be our main um, output and we, we are almost, almost ready to go to the, uh, yes, Nick, um, we are almost ready to go to the community um, consultation. So please uh, keep an eye on our mailing list because uh, we, will, we will include um, soon a mail for the main consultations. Please remember to add your names to the notes and uh, we still have some more minutes. So if anyone has any question, Please just either put it in the chat, the Q&A, let us know any question that you have about the group, how it will continue. Okay, so it looks like no questions by now. So I think later there will be um, a break today. I don't remember the exact schedule for today but uh, still you have some time to have a coffee or stretch relax or something before going to your next activity on the day evening etc etc oh, we have one minute last question uh, will we store crossbox centrally yes they will be a store the links to the current um, location is in the notes so in the notes at the very beginning, you will find where the different outputs are right now. And um, I think we have that information also on the main page for the group, so you can find all there. We will find a way to publish these crosswalks um, in a fairness way, in a fairer way regarding the fair principles. So we will probably deposit them in an archive. So they are also available for a broader audience um, than the people that have been joining the group and the Research Data Alliance. Please remember that we have our monthly call. Um, it is on Thursday. I think it is the third so Thursday at um, 8 p.m not today because well we are having the, the plenary mink if you want to share some last words please go ahead um oh i just mentioned that uh, um that crosswork and and the tools and etc uh, can be available from the github as well um so i put the link in chat um so uh, when we submit output, we will um, put a uh, last version into RDA Zenodo uh, community account and have a group metadata and a DOI. Um, so that could be more discoverable um, by members. Okay. Thank you very okay. much, uh, Nick. Uh, Nick is also. Uh, sending a reminder, we might change the slot for the current uh, meetings. It is at 8 GMT, but uh, we are trying to find a new slot for this because this one with the daylight changes um, on the last month have become difficult for some people. So we will be announcing all these via the mailing list so you can all join. And we will send also a doodle poll later to know what the preferred slot for the different uh, people participating in the meetings is. 
once again thank you very much everybody and enjoy the rest of your day morning evening thank you very much bye bye thanks everyone bye